Yellowstone National Park is one of America's most treasured places. Millions of visitors head to this park each year to see its magnificent geysers, hot springs, canyons, and wildlife. But they're also coming to pay tribute to something more abstract, the power of nature that created all these features. And nowhere in the park is that power more evident than at the aptly named Grand Prismatic Spring, which with its brilliant rainbow colors draws more visitors than any other site. But what makes it so colorful? And why might it be the key to powering all of America's homes? In order to answer that question, we have to get to the bottom of where the park's colors come from. Unlike a rainbow, which forms when sunlight bounces off water droplets in the air, the colors of Yellowstone Springs and geysers come from within. The water itself is colorless, but because the water here is full of dissolved minerals, when it hits the air, those minerals precipitate out and form colorful mineral deposits, a process called deposition. There are two main ingredients in the water that make all this color possible. Silica and a group of elements called the alkali metals. These elements are found in just about everything, including seawater, soil, and even our own bodies. But the real stars of the show are the transition metals. These elements can form colorful compounds because their electrons can absorb visible light. And the different energy levels these electrons can occupy correspond to different colors. So depending on the energy level an electron falls to, the color we see is either absorbed or emitted. Now, while there are many different kinds of transition metals in Yellowstone's water, the main players are iron, copper, and manganese. Now, in order to get into the water, these metals start out in the rock deep under the earth, where they combine with oxygen to form oxides. When rainwater seeps through the rock, it becomes slightly acidic, and that acidity helps strip these metals from their oxide, resulting in water that looks like this. But as this water travels further into the earth, it eventually reaches temperatures high enough to release these metals back to their natural state. What you're left with is water that has a lot of dissolved minerals, which may not look particularly special, but when it reaches the surface, that's when the deposition begins. As the water flows into the cracks of Yellowstone's porous limestone surface, the silica and alkali metals in the water react with the carbon dioxide in the air and become insoluble. They then precipitate out of the water and form beautiful, colorful fans, cones and terraces, like the ones you can see here. Now if you've ever been to Yellowstone, you've probably seen features like this. Limestone terraces are pretty unique to Yellowstone, the most famous being Mammoth Hot Springs. This area is home to a variety of terraces that have formed over thousands of years, all thanks to the deposition of silica and alkali metals. Now these features aren't just beautiful to look at, they're also a goldmine for scientists studying them. You see, since deposition only occurs below a certain temperature, the higher the temperature, the less deposition occurs. That means that by measuring how much deposition takes place, scientists can estimate how much heat is being released from the Earth. And that's exactly what a team of researchers did in this study published in 2021. Using a technique called forward modeling, they measured the rate of deposition in Mammoth Hot Springs and estimated the total geothermal energy contained in the system. Their results were pretty staggering. If you've been to Yellowstone, you probably know it's one of the hottest places on Earth. Its namesake supervolcano sits just beneath the park and regularly releases steam and gases through vents on the surface, known as fumaroles. It also occasionally erupts, creating spectacular displays of mud, ash, and fire. It turns out that all this heat comes from the core of the Earth. And while nuclear fission was once thought to play some role, Today, scientists believe that the heat comes almost entirely from radioactive decay. In other words, the heat generated by Yellowstone comes directly from the sun. The heat hasn't been generated for millions of years. Instead, it's a continuous process that takes place up until today. While Yellowstone's heat might seem like a liability, it could actually help us fight climate change. That's because as the world transitions away from fossil fuels, we need to find new ways to generate electricity and one of the most promising options are geothermal plants. These plants harness the heat from inside the earth to generate electricity. The way they do this varies from location to location, but typically involves drilling deep into the earth and either extracting hot water or steam to spin a turbine connected to a generator. This produces electricity that can be sent to the grid. The great thing about geothermal plants is that unlike coal or natural gas plants, they don't produce any greenhouse gases. They also tend to have a very small land footprint. The downside is that not everyone lives near a geothermal plant because the vast majority of suitable locations are near areas with lots of volcanic activity. In fact, 
Places with lots of volcanic activity are the only places where we can exploit the deeper sources of geothermal energy. This is because the further down you drill, the hotter the rocks become. Eventually they reach temperatures high enough to melt rock and create magma. We can harness this molten rock in a process called Enhanced Geothermal Systems or EGS. The idea is similar to regular geothermal except instead of extracting hot water, we pump water deep into the earth until it becomes supercritical. This supercritical water can then be used to extract heat from the surrounding rocks. The result is a clean, renewable source of energy that doesn't rely on weather conditions like solar or wind. Unfortunately, eggs plants are expensive to build and can cost hundreds of millions of dollars. But if we can figure out how to bring down the price, they could provide a nearly limitless supply of clean energy. The reason is that according to the U.S. Geological Survey, the Mammoth Hot Springs area alone could produce between 2,400 and 7,200 megawatts of power. Now, if you're not sure what that means, let me put it this way. In 2021, the United States generated around 4,100 gigawatts of electricity. That's almost twice the total electricity produced by the entire country in an entire year. Now, if you wanted to cover the entire country, you would need a lot more than just Mammoth Hot Springs. But this example shows how powerful geothermal energy really is. The best part is that we already have most of the technology we need to harness all this energy. Scientists have been studying Yellowstone for decades and we've already built several geothermal plants nearby. So instead of starting from scratch, we could use Yellowstone as a model and scale up the technology we already have. In fact, one company called Alta Energy is already doing just that. They're planning to build a geothermal plant near Idaho Falls that will use supercritical CO2 instead of water. The plant is expected to come online in the next few years and could provide enough energy to power between 100,000 and 200,000 homes. The potential for geothermal energy extends beyond just electricity generation. The water that comes from these springs is naturally rich in minerals that can be used for a variety of purposes. For example, silica is used in glass manufacturing and semiconductors. Copper is obviously used in electrical wiring, but it's also used in solar cells. Manganese is used in batteries, which are becoming increasingly important as we transition to electric vehicles. If we can find a way to economically extract these minerals, we could help reduce the environmental impact of mining. You see, traditional mining operations are often very destructive. They require large areas of land and produce a lot of waste, but by using naturally occurring deposits, we can minimize the impact on the environment. Now some people worry that harvesting these resources will damage Yellowstone, but it's important to remember that this ecosystem is constantly changing. It's shaped by the very same geothermal forces that we're trying to harness. In fact, Mammoth Hot Springs is a great example of this. The terraces there are constantly changing shape as deposition occurs. They grow outward until they reach a certain size, then collapse and reform in a continuous cycle. This means that if we harvest some of the minerals in the park, it won't change the fundamental nature of the ecosystem. In fact, it could even help improve it. You see, these springs are a popular tourist destination, but they're also home to a lot of bacteria. And unfortunately, these bacteria are starting to die off due to a lack of nutrients. By adding back some of the minerals that are naturally found in the springs, we could help these bacteria thrive and create a more vibrant ecosystem. The bottom line is that Yellowstone holds a lot of promise for the future of energy production. From geothermal plants to mineral extraction, there are a lot of opportunities to harness the power of nature in a sustainable way. So the next time you visit Yellowstone, take a moment to appreciate the power of nature and the potential it holds for the future of our planet.